Today I'm working on a friend's laptop. Uh, she brought this thing over to me. It uh, all it would do was you press the power button, all the lights would come on for about a second, and then it would come. It would turn itself back off. The fan would spin. No display, no nothing. Uh, I obviously have it fairly well torn apart now. Uh, after determining the motherboard was bad, and this is pretty much what's left of it now. There's the motherboard in its entirety. Uh, so I'm going to replace that. And as per the theme of my videos lately, I'm going to start this, start the video here about halfway through the process. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do is uh, set this camera up on a tripod and then uh, go to work taking, uh, taking this motherboard the rest of the way off. I've got a new one over here from HP and then I'll start transferring the processor over and all that good stuff and uh, we'll get to business. And yes, I'm using the kitchen table to do this and I really don't care that it's not ESD mat, it's fine. This is a model DV7 3160 US, by the way. And one of the reasons why I decided to make this video is because there's plenty of DV7 videos out there on YouTube on how to take them apart, but the one that I have is a little bit different. Uh, specifically, on the back here, uh, I've just got space for the one hard drive, and this is one panel, and this is another panel up here. Uh, on the other ones, all the other DV7 videos, that I was able to find, they had like a, kind of looked like a T-shaped panel because I guess the other ones have room for two hard drives and then the panel came up here in the middle and that made the keyboard come off all completely differently on their models versus this one so I figure as I'm putting it back together I'll kind of clue you in on how it works. There's a ton of these little ribbon connectors all over this computer. You just pull them up with that little blue tab just give them a pull and they come out. Just gotta go easy with them. I ended up buying the replacement motherboard from HP. Uh, the reason why it's brand new and it's from HP, uh, you could I couldn't find new ones anywhere else other than HP. Found a whole bunch of used ones on eBay for anywhere from 100 to 180 bucks. This one from HP, brand new for 210, but you have to send the the old one back in within three or four days uh, so they don't charge you another two hundred and ten dollars for it but I still think that's a better deal since it's a brand new product versus you know who knows what you're gonna get if you're buying a used one on eBay and if this one went bad maybe the one on eBay it might work for a while but it might go bad too pretty quick the other good thing about buying this new one from HP is it comes with the uh, little thing of the thermal paste for the CPU along with some alcohol pads to clean off the heat sink and CPU when you put it all back together and I thought that was pretty cool. Plus the return shipping of the old motherboard is free. And on these crazy things you just gotta be really careful to get absolutely everything disconnected. Everything. Like I said, these little ribbon cables are all over the place.
unfortunately my camera cut off for the dramatic conclusion there, but in order to get this thing fully free, uh, it gets kind of hooked in under this side over here with all the different connectors coming out of the case. And you just kind of wiggle it around and I just kind of pulled it up like that and out it came. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this new one out of the pack and I'll be promise I'll be a little more careful with the ESD stuff um, with the new motherboard. I'm going to lay it down here right next to the old one and I'm going to start transferring the you know like the fan and then the, the memory card reader and then we'll do the processor. Uh, I'm planning on doing it last but we'll just see. Okay, we'll scratch that on the memory card reader. The new one obviously comes with it. Alright, a little old versus new. So here's the old one. Um, obviously, this heat sink, or this fan, and the heat sink contraption here is going to come off and go on to the new one there. You can see the socket for the motherboard. Um, so that's going to be the next step. Six screws total, holding this whole thing down, and they're actually numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's one connector here for the fan, and it looks like it actually is a cooling uh, device for the obviously the CPU here but also the video card which after doing some research on this thing it appears that the video chip is what goes bad on these motherboards and I found on a couple of other YouTube videos where I guess you can send a motherboard in and they can replace it for 80, 90 bucks, 100 bucks but again if I can get a brand new one from HP for 200 yeah. So to remove this processor, there's a black screw here. And you're just going to twist it. There's a little unlock thing on it. And I'll try to show you. You got this black screw. And you can actually see the whole carriage move just a little bit. It's in the unlock position now. And I'm going to move it to the lock. But it is very tight. You can actually see it moving. I'm going to transfer that bad boy over to the new motherboard. I'm touching both motherboards and I'll take this out very, very gently. There's the bottom, if you wanted to see. Okay. And it says to clean the top of the processor and the bottom of the heat sink using an alcohol pad included in the kit or a clean or a clean dry wipe to remove all traces of the old thermal grease. Okay, as you can see, I have applied the thermal paste to the top of the CPU there and then also to the top of the GPU. And it used up everything that was in this syringe. The instructions said to use half of it on an AMD processor. It didn't say anything about the GPU, but I know something's got to go on there. Something was obviously on there before, uh, so I just put it on there. Now for this one, I'm assuming is probably the North Bridge. It came with a, a little stamp size uh, thermal paste, so I just put that little stamp on there. And then there's two extras I guess you could use for the processor if you needed to. So now that the processor is on there with the thermal paste and 
ready to go. I'm about ready to put the heat sink back on there. But before I do, on the old motherboard, see here, this is the hard drive connector. This is going to have to come off. And then there's one, one other cable over here on the old one I have to transfer over. So I'm going to pop this out right now, put it on the new one, and then put the heat sink and fan back on. Just pull up on that black tab and off it comes. Got all the goop off of the old heat sink mount or contact surfaces. Okay, up here is one very important step I almost overlooked. You see on the old one we've got we got this piece here. This goes on the bottom of where the video card is on the top side. The new one does not have that. So I'm going to have to transfer this over in the old one. And it looks like you just press on these. It looks like it's going to come off. And that's what it looks like on the bottom side there. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing. Since they're numbered, we'll just tighten them down in order. Two. Five and six. Okay. One thing you definitely don't want to do is to forget to hook up the power connector back to the fan right there Just snaps together down here. And then carefully remember all these little ribbon cables and connectors. There are four screws that hold the monitor on. Two on the left side, two on the right side, and then you've got this is the monitor cable. Uh, in order to remove this from the mud board, you just you pull up on that black tab, and then the connector just comes up right up and off, just like so, and just obviously presses back down on there to reseat. And that sticker is just the replacement part number for the monitor, if you had to buy it. And then these wires here are the power wires for the monitor and they snake through this hole down here and hook on the back side and I'll show you that in a second.
Okay, and those two power wires from the monitor, they feed through from the top back to here. And you'll see they're numbered. One goes to one, and then two to two. And these just snap on this thing here.